welcome to this special edition of A Current Affair coming to you tonight from London. Ten years ago, the world was obsessed with Susan Boyle after she walked out onto the stage of Britain's Got Talent and sang in that surprising voice that she had a dream. But fame and success can be a double-edged sword and Susan struggled afterwards with public meltdowns and family issues even while her albums were breaking sales records. Then she got a diagnosis that changed everything. Because you were also carrying the dreams of everyone who's ever been bullied, ever been misunderstood, mm -hmm. ever been marginalised. Maybe it was, I was really saying, if I could do it, you can do it. And it's amazing the, the amount of people who have taken that up, the physical disabilities and everything. Is that your message? Yeah. To spread the kindness? Yeah. Don't see just a part of me, just see the whole person, not just a bit of me, just the whole person. It's a pretty good whole person. It was such an act of courage, I think, wasn't it? I did it mostly for my parents because my, my mother died two years before that and uh, I, th I said to her to try and do something with my life. She used to uh, say, well, you do doing me yourself. You've got a reasonable voice, you should do something with it. Did you really think about not going ahead? Well, I, I caught the Piers Morgan and uh, I uh, was all set to quit the show, but he told me, don't. You have, you have the press to prove a point to go back and do it again. Glad I did now. <laughs> I, can, I can imagine. How hard was it, though, to, you know, to stay with it? Well, when you've got uh, a lot of pressure, a lot of different things going at once, it is difficult. But you say to yourself, this is what you wanted to do, this is what you really put yourself in for. Susan was an immediate phenomenon. To date, she's sold more than 25 million albums, been number one in 40 countries and had two Grammy nominations. But 10 years ago, the instant fame took its toll. Susan broke down after the final of Britain's Got Talent. The pressure was too much. I was a raw rookie. A raw rookie. You were. I mean, there had been times I guess back when we look back at the pressure that you came under, mm -hmm. you know, you were a global sensation. How did you process all of that pressure, Susan? Well, to begin with, I found it difficult. I'm not going to lie to you, but uh, I think uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a feeling of the unknown, really. You know, that's really what it was at that particular time. But uh, as, as the years have gone by, I've learned to, I learned to, you know, try to tune myself into things more. There were people at the time who had concerns about your health and they thought it was too much for you. Do you remember feeling that kind of pressure and that sort of concern about whether it was too much? Well, at the, at the, at the, the time, I didn't have the tools to deal with it. One person who knows exactly how challenging this time was for Susan is her publicist and manager from the very start, Nicola um, Phillips. My initial role was to come in and do publicity and also lock down on the very negative headlines that were happening at the time. I mean, there was there was this tall poppy thing. I mean, first of all, she was wrapped up in a big embrace and then suddenly everyone was out to get her. And how did she deal with that? I mean, not very well, uh, yes. but I don't think anybody would. When, when, you know, when you're being publicly assassinated and called names and no one's going to deal with that well, especially when you have come from a very provincial town in Scotland and you have spent your life really wrapped in cotton wool. Um, so it was it was dealing with that shock. So, no, I mean, it obviously it upset her. Like, for years I thought I had something a bit more serious, you know? So that was sort of took it off my shoulders a bit. You'd always thought that you were very slightly brain damaged from mm -hmm. birth, that's right, weren't that's right. you? Quite serious brain damage as well because it was educative. The assumption was that you were a little bit slow, that you were a slow learner, mm -hmm. but really when you got your Asperger's diagnosis, you were also told that you have a very high IQ, higher than normal. Well, that came as a bit of a surprise. I think sudden fame is, you know, I mean, it's a lot to deal with for someone who doesn't have Asperger's, but is, Asperger's yeah. adds a whole other layer to it, doesn't it? Well, you, Asperger's, you just have to make people aware that sometimes you have to go at a certain pace, you know, and not be too bombarded with things. I mean, at the very beginning, it was very bombarded. Yes, and, and you've been very open about your Asperger's, which is, you know, which is 
decent of you because a lot of people try to keep that stuff secret and you haven't done that. There's nothing to keep secret, really. There's nothing to be ashamed of. No. Everybody has something. I mean, we flow if you like. But uh, they shouldn't be ashamed of it. It's something that you bring out in the open and the, and the hope that you help other people, you know? But uh, I like to feel I'm the voice for people who have been the underdog. No, you, you, you described it as King Kong's mother when you feel like you're having a... <laughs> what are you talking about, eh? <laughs> I'm more control now. I can laugh at it now. It feels like you're in a bubble and you can't really talk very well because it's communicative as well. If people give you a bit more time, like you're doing, Thank you. I can eventually get my words out and I'm, I'm okay. I don't get a sense that you're struggling with your words at all right now. You too much, eh? <laughs> I not about that. So uh, what are the coping skills that you learned when you got that diagnosis? Well, when you when you like that, you, you get hyperactive, you know, and of course you get all shaky and everything. So I've learned to calm down by using relaxation techniques. A lot of people, they've remembered the public meltdowns and, and the, yeah. you know, the serious issues that she's had over the years. And a lot of people have formed a view that she really shouldn't be performing anymore because it's not good for her. Well, see, I completely disagree. Right. She has an amazing life. Susan will never care about, you know, money. She'll never care about chart positions. She cares about making people happy. For, for us having to go through, you know, airport security and goodness knows what else. But for somebody with Asperger's, that's heightened because, you know, suddenly you're experiencing a pat down or people are in your face. It's, you know, it's a lot. Do you think that she's got a handle on the meltdowns now and that they just won't happen again. Are you confident about that? I'm not saying that they won't ever happen again. Right. I mean, I, but I think in terms of where we were um, and the frequency, I mean, they're, they're few and far between now. What are your dreams now? I'm a bucket list. I've got a bucket list. Okay. One is to ride a bike. I've got my very first bike. Never had a bike when I was a kid. A bicycle? And I've got my professional license, I've learned to drive. Shush. Really? Mm-hmm. You good so far? Well, I've managed to steer a straight line, put it that way. <laughs> OK, that's a really good start. And why wouldn't you have gone for your licence, you know, years ago? Why has it taken until now for you to do that? Oh, 58. Life begins at 58. A little bird told me that you're also thinking about getting your pilot's licence. Oh, yeah. I, I did mention to somebody that I was interested in flying. Are you serious about I'm that? serious about it, yeah. So there you are. Is it...? Just a shot behind the wheel or something. Mind you, uh, I definitely have nerves of steel by me. <laughs> Dipping, I think. <laughs> Sydney diving. <laughs> what else is on your bucket list? I was going to buy a horse. A horse? Yeah, yeah. See, I'm going, to, going mad today, aren't I? <laughs> Why do you want a horse? Just a beautiful animals. They are beautiful animals. But they can learn to ride. You've got to learn to ride as well. Mm, keep you guessing. <laughs> There's nothing you don't want to do now, is there? It feels like you've been, I don't know, I let off the leash. I just want to keep going. I just want to keep entertaining people, making albums, touring. Oh, so, so much. So much. In my next lifetime, I'm going to have that voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we cry when we first see you. You say, you go, don't the earth, you say. It's a good way to be because you keep yourself grounded. You also make yourself appear more normal to other people, you know, approachable, if you like. And is that important to you, not to get airs and graces? Do you... Put airs and graces on when you need them. Three, four... Every night I lie in bed The brightest colours fill my head. We were given exclusive access to their rehearsal on the eve of the Britain's Got Talent finale, where music legend Michael Ball... <laughs> Look at me. Showbiz, I blummin' love it. ..and Susan were preparing for their live performance. It's the biggest show on British television. Yes. It's, uh, it's a special one as well. It's 10-year anniversary. And, and I'm singing with one of the most fabulous singers. Was today your first rehearsal? Yeah. Your first rehearsal is yeah. literally the day before yeah. the performance. Yeah. That's Gosh. showbiz. <laughs> <laughs> and you feeling confident? I really am. And I think there's a different performance energy that you get. I mean, you're in a sort of subterranean Slightly. room here. <laughs> <laughs> when you walk out and it's boom. It'll be wonderful. Yeah. It'll be wonderful. It just, it, it, yeah. Yeah, but we've got to nail it. Yeah, yeah. We've got to nail it. OK, I'm getting out of your way. Okay. I mean, there's no other star from reality TV who has, you know, been going 10 years. 
And it's it's hard in the entertainment industry to go missing for a while, which she's done, and then come back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we managed to do it. <laughs> With, she's the queen of the comeback. Touring the UK and Scotland. Watch your space for further information. Might you come to Australia? I would love to come to Australia. I'd love to revisit them. Australians would love to have you back, Susan. And I, if you come back, I'll introduce you to my two horses. Well, that'll be good. Maybe go for a ride. <laughs> OK, we can go for a ride. <laughs> Susan is not your run-of-the-mill recording star and she's not your run-of-the-mill interview either. She's extremely shy and her Asperger's plays into how she interacts and how she communicates, which really, when you think about it, makes her achievements even more remarkable. She has more money now than she will ever spend. So the fact that she's keen to step back into the spotlight is testament to her grit and maybe a little bit of Scottish stubbornness as well. Her new album, 10, is available now.